I think that design is the common denominator for everyone. It's something we all have access to. No matter where we live in the world, there could be different kind of uh, design, different design traditions. But I think it's a basic thing for human beings that they design what surround them in their lives. But what is quite interesting is that uh, in Denmark and the Nordic countries, we always have the humans as a starting point when you talk about design. It's always something which evolves from a true need and the idea of the designer really focusing on who's going to use the designs and then you find the proper solution. It's a very humanistic approach. It is a very humanistic approach indeed. Yeah, I see a lot of similar uh, approaches at other parts of the world. For instance, in Japan, which is a country which has a very strong and direct connection and dialogue with the, the Danish design, the refined approach, uh, not very loud and flashing, it's more uh, subtle in many ways. I think that also, in my perspective, combines the Danish and Japanese approach is our way of working closely together with nature. I completely agree. I mean, in Denmark, we are quite surrounded by nature and uh, by the sea, and uh, Japan is a huge <laughs> country compared to Denmark, but it's the same uh, idea of uh, the coastline and forest, etc. Nature is very important to both cultures. There's such a kinship between Japan and, and Denmark when it comes to design. And I think it, it's safe to say that that we share a love for things made by the hand because it's maybe even a reflection of the, the, the human touch. It's true. And I mean, in the 20th century, we praised the machines and everything should be born by the machines. And now we are sort of going back to something different where it's the analog, the tactile experience. It's also the idea of the, the artist or the craftsman or the designer's personal print in a more literal sense of the word. And maybe also the history mm. that has been put into the product. Yeah, true. Because we tap into a longer history and then we become a part of the history ourselves when we use the product. Yeah. When we talk about design icons that have been designed by Danish designers, most of them started their lives for public institutions. And then they, they made their ways into Danish homes. Exactly. It becomes part of the common heritage and then everyone also internationally connects with the Danish culture. It's extraordinary that something which has been designed for 100 years ago, it was suddenly in all homes. And it still seems modern. It's so fresh when you see it. I think one of the things I myself appreciate with Danish design icons is that my children want to inherit the ones I have. Exactly. And they're timeless. Yeah, in a way, it's true. and maybe that's also one of the reasons why it's so durable and the uh, the simplistic aesthetics that the designers used make them items that you can see in almost every kind of a home, but also in institutions. It's interesting that you call it timeless because I think when you talk about classics, they have to be timeless. But on the other hand, when they were designed, they were so much a response to the specific times, but they are not very trendy. And so, ten years after, it's so last year and it has this wonderful combination of being durable and timeless. But don't you think that also has to do with the choice of materials? That, Definitely. That, that they are very, very durable. They can oh, yes. last for a, a exactly. generation after yeah, generation. Exactly. And uh, it has this uh, durability which is also important when you talk about sustainability. It's not just about new materials and new approaches to construction and materiality. It's also about things which are pure and good and can last for a long time. And do you think that it also has to play a role for the constant success of Danish design icons that they are also now tapping into the sustainability discussion? I think so, because you can produce things in a new way and it will be sustainable. You can regard the wood, where does it come from? Is it a sustainable forest production, etc.? But you can also say that not just using and throw away, but keep to the good things invest in good quality, then you have something which is long lasting and even you can pass it on to the future generations. And that's, for my case at least, it's sustainability at a very high level. And I think one last thing to mention is also the need for new solutions to the very huge problems that we're dealing with, environmental problems, sustainability as a whole. And I think design has very many good answers to offer. Mm -hmm. And we should be sure as a society to include the people who actually know this. So we know that there are future generations upcoming and we know what they're doing. And I think that is a very promising hope for our future. <laughs>